Hey y'all, hey, it's your girl Kat, and I'm back with another video. And this one is going to be on my girl Maria Lichardi. Now I'm going to try to make it quick, but not too quick, because I got to give y'all some info on this little chick, okay? Maria was born March 24th, 1951, in Second Digliano, Naples, Italy. She is known for being the head of the Lachardi clan. Maria, a.k.a. La Madrina, the Godmother, a.k.a. La Piccolina, the Little Girl, also a.k.a. Pizzarella, Little Girl. She had a lot of a.k.a. names, right? <laughs> but yeah, let's get into it. She earned a lot of nicknames, but the one that stood out the most was La Piccolina, the Little Girl, early on in her criminal career due to her diminutive height. Lachardi was born and raised in Neapolitan suburb of Second Digliano, a traditional stronghold of Lichardi clan. Her entire family belonged to the Camorra. Her father was a well-known guapo, or aka local boss. One of her brothers, Gennaro Lichardi, known as Signa the Monkey, was a very powerful guapo as well who later became the head of the clan and founding member of the Second Digliano Alliance. This alliance was known as the Powerful Camorra Clan, which controlled drug trafficking and the extortion rackets in many suburbs of Naples. Unfortunately, Gennaro died from blood poisoning while in the Vaghera prison on August 3, 1994. Lachardi's husband, Antonio Tegami, was also in the Camorra. Maria rose to power and took over as head of the clan after her two brothers, Pietro and Vizino, and her husband were arrested. She was the first female Camorista to become the boss of the Lachardi clan and take over as the head of the Second Digliano Alliance. The death of Gennaro Lachardi caused some disruption in the local underworld, as well as several bloody attempts to seize control, but the clan was kept in stable condition by Maria. She brought together a fragile, informal coalition of 20 Camorra clans in order to expand control of the city's most lucrative rackets from drugs and cigarette smuggling to protection and prostitution. <laughs> Miss Maria, she also played a key role in expanding the city's drug trade market. Under her leadership, the Second Digliano Alliance became more organized, secretive, sophisticated, and consequently more powerful. Mm. Now, did y'all just hear that? Under a lady's headship, this clan became more powerful. Stand up, ladies. It is also said that Lachardi introduced many revolutionary changes to the clan. Perhaps the most important among them was the involvement in the prostitution trade. Prior to this, Camorra clan had a code of conduct that forbade them from making money from prostitution. However, under Lachardi, this code was broken, baby. The Camorra would buy the girls from the Albanian mafia for 2000 US dollars. Many of them came on the promise of legitimate work in order to escape the crushing poverty of their homeland. But once they arrived, they were practically enslaved and forced into prostitution by the Camorra. Most of the girls are said to have been underage. They were often put on drugs, which helped increase criminal activity as they usually spent a large part of their income to purchase narcotics for consumption. Unlike many male leaders, Lachardi shunned the limelight, and she was never convicted or even suspected of any crime. One well-connected insider described her as radiating a steely charisma. According to one of the police sources, she was reputed to be practical, charming, exceptionally intelligent, but just as ruthless as her male counterparts. Mm. You go, girl. Now, I'm not one for crime, and I know that you definitely need to do the time, but this lady was actually handling her business as this boss leader. She carried a cold, calculating approach in her criminal endeavors, reportedly taking her inspiration from Rosetta Cutalo, the sister of Rafael Cutalo, the boss of the Nuova Camorra Organizada. 
On the other hand, under Lachati, the Klan generated a great amount of goodwill among the local populace as it continued the old habit of giving an occasional handout to the neighborhood's poor. In second, Digliano, with no social security benefits provided to the people by the local government in the endemic unemployment rate, the Klan provided the neighborhood with the principal source of employment. When a source was asked about Maria Lachardi and the women in the second Digliano alliance, he replied this, They are on the front line. It has always been like this in the second Digliano clan, in the sense that women, wives, sisters, mothers of the leaders have always had an influential role in many decisions. Maria Lachardi, Gennaro's sister, is representative of this. She took orders to and from her brother. She transmitted his orders and messages, even those of major importance. On more than one occasion, she transported his orders to kill. I don't recall the details, but I know that for our clan, talking with Maria Lachardi was the same as talking with Gennaro, the boss. I can add that the second Digliano women took on all sorts of jobs on behalf of the Alliance. They took messages to prisoners, distributed money to members. They organized activities, especially numbers running in extortion rackets. In other words, they constitute the backbone of the organization. Now that was deep, y'all. It sounded like those women really had really had a lot to do with this organization being on top during that time. All right, so let's get back to it. Lucia Lachardi, she's no relation to Maria, was the only journalist to get access to her inner circle. In an interview, she described her management style as follows. She behaves just like the manager of a multinational. She always looks for a solution that's less likely to attract police attention and that creates fewer splits within the clan. Luigi Babio, a judge on the Maria Lachardi case, stated that the moment a woman takes charge of the organization, paradoxically, we witness a lowering of the emotional level and a better performance of the group's activities. The reign of Maria Lachardi ran smoothly for many years until a disagreement arose over a consignment of pure, unrefined heroin. In the spring of 1999, a large consignment of heroin arrived from Istanbul, Turkey. Lachardi decreed it should not be sold because it was too pure and too strong for the average user and consequently killed those who purchased it, which would harm their big customer base and, you know, just basically cause them to lose customers. However, the LaRosso clan had always chafed and undermined her leadership, disagreed, and packaged the shipment for sale on the streets. The sale of the packets of unrefined heroin resulted in deaths of many drug addicts across Naples, 11 of whom died in April 1999 alone. This caused great public outrage and resulted in massive police crackdowns on the Camorra clans. Many of the Camorristi were arrested and subsequently imprisoned. Thus, the LaRosso clan eventually split from the alliance. Clans began fighting over turf and attempted to destroy and take other clans' businesses. When four clan members were murdered in her stronghold of Second Digliano, Latrati was forced to retaliate. She mobilized her foot soldiers for an all-out counterattack. The daily gang wars resulted in nearly 120 deaths in Naples and the surrounding regions. It was around this moment in time that investigators had finally became aware of Lachardi's existence. This put Lachardi on the 30s most wanted Italians list, and she went into hiding. Thanks to the sophisticated network of protection set up by her clan, Lachardi was able to evade capture for two years. While in hiding, she continued as the undisputed boss of the Lachardi clan and ordered several murders of rival mobsters. She went to war with Giuliano clan of Forcella, which was headed by another female Camorra boss, Armenia Giuliano, who took control after the arrest of her brother, Luigi Giuliano. When the senior prosecutor, Luigi Babio, began making successful prosecutions against her clan, 
Lachardi felt that he was getting closer to discovering her whereabouts. In January 2001, she bombed Bobbio's office building. The bombing was delivered as a warning to stop the investigation of her clan's activities and also to stop any further prosecution of her clan members. However, the bombing did not stop Bobbio from continuing his investigations. On the contrary, he was put under police protection and continued his prosecutions against the clan undeterred. All the while, over 70 members of the Lachardi clan were arrested. However, they did not talk or cooperate with the prosecutors, and they served their prison sentences. The police made many fruitless efforts to catch Lachardi. In April 2000, they arrested 13 Camorra bosses who were holding a summit around a table in a rural farmhouse between the districts of Culiano and Giuliano. The group was allegedly discussing how to invest its funds in a network of furniture and children's clothing stores. However, Lachardi was not among them. On June 9, 2001, several hundred heavily armed officers backed by helicopter spotters launched an intensive search operation in and around 2nd Digliano. Acting on a tip-off, they stormed a building that she had been known to use as a hideout. Latrati was nowhere to be found, but police did discover that inside an attic guarded by surveillance cameras, she had installed marble floors and grand piano and an outside jacuzzi. Her repeated successes in evading capture by the police inspired local journalists to dub her the Scarlet Pimpernel of Italy. But just days later, on June the 14th, 2001, Latrati was arrested by Naples police while traveling with a married couple on board around Melito near Naples. She did not resist arrest and was ultimately sentenced to prison. The man accused of aiding her was arrested as well, whereas his wife was released due to her being a mother of a child. After her arrest, police noticed she looked just like the popular mugshot of her that was released years earlier. After her arrest, her brother Vincenzo Lachardi took over as head of the clan. Vincenzo was himself eventually arrested on February the 7th, 2008, after having been included on the list of the most wanted fugitives in Italy since 2004. Although in prison, she still commanded the clan. In 2009, Lachardi was released from prison after almost eight years. However, she was arrested again at Rome's Simpino Airport by Cabanero on the orders of Naples prosecutors alleged to have been running extortion rackets as the head of the Lachardi Camorra clan on August the 7th, 2021. So guys, what are your thoughts on Maria Lachardi? She was a bad bee. I'll tell you that. I'll give her that she was a bad bee, uh, you know, amongst the other ones that I've done too. But this one, she she stood out the most. Um, I don't know what it was about her, but yeah. What are your thoughts? Let me know what you think. Comment below. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Okay? But no, for real, guys. Let me know what you think, for real, about Miss Maria. Um, how she handled it. Do y'all think y'all could have been a boss like her? I don't know if I could have pulled it off. You know, I'm a little, little scared of the, the jail life. But hey, some people some people can do that, you know? But yeah, uh, let me know what your thoughts are. Um, and we'll get into this next video when I drop another one. Peace.